As time has progressed here over the last decade or so, uh, especially since 9-11, the airlines have made life real difficult for traveling anglers. Um, you've got surcharges for extra baggage, you've got length requirements, you've got a lot of different issues. And the reality is there are a lot of great places to go fishing, and unfortunately those wonderful places may not have wonderful gear to fish. In general, with travel rods, you know, they have typically all in the past used one connecting system. It's a standard ferrule. One part of the rod blank fits into another section. You can see here, here we have one section fits into the other. This standard ferrule works well for lighter tackle. Um, it does not do as well, it's not as strong for the heavy stuff. So we'll utilize this type of ferrule system in our light inshore rods, and I'll get back to those in a moment. The second type of system that you see, uh, and this is one that we use on our moderate test rods, it's also one that uh, Okuma uses with her Nomad series, is a European spigot ferrule. And you can see, I'll zoom in a little bit here, you can see on this ferrule that you have two pieces that come together and there's a reinforced section that runs into the upper section. That adds some strength to it, and, and for us, we look at this as being a good way to go up to 30, 40 pounds of realistic you know, line test. And you know that sort of drag load, maybe up to 15 pounds, uh, drag 10 to 15, real common. We'll drop down and use the same type of ferreling system on our Surf Explorer, and we'll come to it. And the third type that we use, and this is something that's kind of unique to us, is what I'll refer to as a lockdown gimbal uh, section. And on our heavier rods, this is what we use. It's reinforced, it's a lockdown, which is what that's for, and then we have a gimbal. You can see how it's notched on this piece, and the receiver has a notch as well, or a post that goes through. And so there's only one way that this will fit, and once she's in there, she's locked down. It's a locked down ferrule. Our Inshore Explorer series come in a nice tube. So great for travel. Airlines love it. You can put it in the overhead storage, which is what you can do with all of the rods from us. They will fit in the overheads. You can just carry them right on the plane. No extra baggage to deal with. So that's a nice, secure way to travel. Our inshore series of rods, basically there's a, there's a nominal line class of 12 pound, 15 pound, and, and 20 pound. I will say those tests are a little on the optimistic side. I, I would prefer to see people, you know, look at the 12 pound as really a 10 pound application, you know, operating two to three pounds worth of drag. The 15 pound, eh, 12 to 15. The 20 pound, 15 if you want a little bit stiffer rod. You know, you could use 20 on it, but I would fish them fairly conservatively. These are real light rods. They all feature uh, a nice cork grip. They're all triggered on the conventional side. When we go to the spinning series, excuse me, for the back of the head. On the spinning series, obviously, there's not going to be uh, a trigger. Um, they use a nice cork handle, real light. It's, the blank goes all the way through on the handle. That makes them very sensitive. You're going to feel a fish fart. Um, you know, the rods are 7 feet 6 inches in length. They're lightweight rods. They've done very, very well. Now, I will give one ca caveat on the light inshore uh, explorers. They're not made for use with heavy lines and big fish. For that type of application, we need to shift gears and go to something else. These are a dandy rod for use inshore. Well, that's why they're called an inshore explorer. Now, I've had a couple of uh, folks that have broken the rods. Uh, one fella specifically um, broke one uh, fishing up in Alaska on a downrigger. They're not made for downrigger use. I had another fellow that bo broke a rod on a party boat. Uh, and after he had caught seven ling cod, seven ling cod, on a party boat, you know, with 30 other anglers, he broke the rod. It's not made to be fished that way. This is a light inshore piece. It can also do double duty as a freshwater piece for you. But they're not made for fishing big fish, you know, heavy fish. Um, guys that are using them for, you know, some snook and some small tarpon, bonefish, stuff like that, cool. You know, inshore species doing some bassin, cool, great application but they're not made for going heavy. You know, you know, definitely respect the line class on these guys. Don't fish them at 30 pound or 40 pound. Um, we have them available in both spinning guide for, uh, format 
and also conventional. Uh, work great with a little bait caster or a small you know, 2000 uh, size type reel on the spinning side. Now the Surf Explorer is a different animal. Now, the Surf Explorer comes in you know, a bag like this. We will be shifting over uh, and doing these in tubes also, but at present uh, we probably have more of the bag style. Uh, if you've gone to the trouble of watching this and you want the new version uh, in the tube, just let us know when you place the order. Yeah, and we'll be able to accommodate that. If you're watching this video, you know, a few months after production, everything will be coming in the tube instead of uh, in the soft bag. Uh, and that's just because I wanted to make a change. Uh, the Surf Explorer is, is really an exotic rod. Uh, the piece, let me get around <laughs> the ceiling here. Uh, this guy is about nine feet tall. Um, it's, it's a long rod. It's made for casting in the surf. It's available in conventional. It's also in, uh, available in the spinning format. Um, these guys utilize a spigot ferrule. Um, so you can see, one piece into the other. Um, now notice again on the spigot ferrule, you don't, you're not going to get these two sections to meet. That's done purposely. That allows for some expansion and contraction over time. If you jam them down, they're going to get stuck. You don't do that. You know, you just bring them down to a nice snug fit and that's good. That's as far as it needs to go. And that's the same with Akuma or anybody that's using a European spigot ferrule. It's a nice reinforced design. Now these guys are exceptionally light. They've got a wonderful re reel seat. Uh, they're graphite constructed. Um, you know, look out for lightning storms and things like that on any long rod like these guys. They'll accommodate spinning, uh, as I mentioned, and conventional. Um, the hoods are not so tall as to deal with, say, an Abbott, but your, your typical bait caster. Uh, a lot of the reels from Penn as well, uh, with the narrower foot and, and uh, Dylo, um, would, would work just fine that way too. They're a multi-piece rod, so here's one section, two sections, three, and four. Uh, versus our inshore explorers, so those are a three-piece. These guys are a four-piece. Super, super light. Um, your extended, uh, you know, uh, handle area. Uh, you know, so you can really get some good leverage uh, on a cast and, and cover some distance. They're made as a nominal line class of a 20-pound piece. Uh, they'll fish 15 just fine. Uh, 20 would be their outside edge. Uh, for guys who are targeting some stripers in the surf, that sort of thing, wonderful. You know, stick on a, a good quality reel uh, and have some fun. But real light, you know, nice price point, nice parabolic bend on these guys. You know, you know, that I can't demonstrate real well on the way these guys bend, but it's a nice parabolic bend you know, you know, through the rod. And that does a lot to help cushion the strike. Now, from the Inshore Explorers and the Surf Explorer, both trade named, uh, we move into our Offshore Explorers. And the first of these would be a, a 30 pound, phenomenal 30 pound casting stick. Um, I'll call this a 30 to 40. It's a fairly stiff bend on these guys. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a little bit slower in action. Uh, you know, so you get a pretty good bend throughout the rod, which will allow the use of spectra. It uses a spigot ferrule again. Um, foam section. Uh, given that some guys will be taking this on a panga going into Baja, we made these with a slick butt. Of course, there's a gimbal at the rump end. Uh, metal reel seat, nice lockdown. Uh, this piece comes apart like that. So again, we're going to get into our multi-piece. Let's see here. It's a four-piece design. So there are four pieces, all spigot ferrule. Uh, wonderful blank and these guys will come and again in the soft pack uh, and it, the rod inside the soft pack actually allows a little bit of room uh, which all of our offshore explorers do you've got room to stick in um, uh, well, potentially you can stick a little reel in there or your lures or some other accessories um, again it does great in the overhead compartment of an airplane um, super product but that's for your 30 to 40 pound application now We get into a couple of other pieces um, on the heavy side, and one of them may go away. Um, utilizing the lockdown gimbal pieces, we have one dual tip. It comes with a 20 pound, also comes with a, a 30 to 40 pound tip. Um, 
those offshore explorers have in, in their design an assumption that guys are going to use these on a boat uh, in a trolling application. You know, they all feature you know, uh, either slick butts or unibuts, uh, which would be a pack bay uh, product. You know, and we take these all the way up to the 50 to 80 pound class. So the first piece you saw on the offshore explorer was the casting model, which is a 30 to 40 application. And then we have a dual tip model, which is good for 20 to 40 pounds, depending upon which tip you use. And then we have more of a 30, 40, more of a dedicated troller. And then we have a 50 to 80 pound piece. Now, we've got the thing all dialed in, uh, better than we had before. And what we had before was, was the best there was in the marketplace. Um, the new version, we've extended the ferrule system. So it's a little bit longer, provides uh, a little more security on that lockdown. The guides on all these rods are, are made to accommodate the use of spectra. Um, again, we have um, a unibut from Pack Bay. This piece, of course, will separate if I don't knock anything down. Okay, so that's one piece. The parts alone on the, on this for for a, a unibut, that's probably 100 to 120 bucks if you were to try and build a rod yourself. That's before we start getting into the guide set um, or anything else. So then we break down again. And then we break down again for our fourth piece. So four pieces made to accommodate 50 to 80. The bend on these guys is, is right on the money now. Um, it's the best we've done. Um, and you know what we've done in the past has been darn good. But we've listened to folks who said, okay, stiffen this up or make a change here. We've done that. Um, the new versions are very stout. You know. You know, and they're extraordinary rods. The action is right on, uh, and they will fish that class of 50 to 80 and do it well. Uh, we've had some good fish taken on them. Uh, the bend on these guys, it, it, it's, it's pretty amazing the way this thing works. I'm not sure if I can get this in the video or not. You'd think with the reinforcement in the metal that, that the rod would shut off. It really does not. It extends through there very, very well. Um, and you can put a load on these guys. You, know, you flat out can. So if you want to use it for marlin, want to use it for better quality tuna, um, go for it. If you're fishing a panga uh, in Mexico or you're going to Panama or you're traveling anywhere uh, and you need a little better class rod than what a pangaro typically has, which is going to be a four rod with lousy drags and probably pretty poor line, get yourself one of these. They'll flat out get the job done well. Best rods in the, in, on the market for fishing heavier lines. Um, and, you know, that's not an idle boast. I don't think there's anything else out there that will fish the class that these guys will. Um, I've seen custom rods made for this application that run well over $1,000. And we sell these guys in a range that's about three bills and down. So, again, in summary, inshore explorers, three different models made for fishing up to 20 pounds. Those are inshore explorers. They are made to be real light, real sensitive uh, for targeting fish in that you know, five pound and down type of range. You know, fishing your light lines. You know, the second grouping of rods that we have would be the surf explorers. Surf explorers are, are made for fishing the surf, about a nine foot length. You know, made for fishing 20 pound line, you can drop down to 15 and be just fine. It's a soft enough action to accommodate that well. And then we get into our offshore explorers. On the offshore side, there's a 30 to 40 pound casting stick. There's a 20 40 uh, dual tip model. There's a 30 40. You know, featuring the same, the same componentry that we use in our 50 to 80. That's more of a dedicated um, uh, piece for use. You, know, you can use it jigging, you can use it for bait, but it'll, it'll come with the um, Pack Bay Unibut. And so trolling is certainly something that's, that's in consideration for its uh, application. And then of course the 50 to 80. Those guys on that 50 to 80 and the 30 to 40 with the unibuts are fairly heavy rods. They're made for, for fishing heavy. You know, they're made for bigger, bigger game fish. So if you're traveling, we've got the travel rods for you. Thanks for watching the video. Hopefully it wasn't too long and too boring, and we'll go into something else. But in any event, that's the, the lineup for 2012 and beyond. Thanks.